how one line of code caused a $60 million loss. 60,000 people lost full phone service. Half of AT&T's network goes down and 500 airline flights uh, were delayed. <whistles> On January 15th, 1990, ooh, this one's an oldie. Uh, AT&T's new Joy Z operations center detected a widespread system malfunction shown by a plethora of red warnings on their network display. Despite attempts to rectify the situation, their network remained compromised for nine hours, leading to 50% failure rate in call connections. AT&T lost over 60 million. Uh, as a result, with over 60,000 of Americans left with fully disconnected phones. Furthermore, 500 flight airline flights were delayed, affecting 85,000 people. Damn, from one line of code, and it was started in New Jersey. New Jersey was the first people to recognize it. This seems great. This seems great. I know, well, 60 million, of course, that's low. But you have to remember, this was the 90s, okay? Like, the amount of airplane flights is not the same as it is today. The amount of people, like, say, using cellular devices, not as much, okay? So imagine if they just completely borked the network and everything for nine hours due to one line of code today. It would be billions of dollars, okay? So put it into perspective, understand it. AT&T's long-distance network was supposedly a paragon of efficiency, handling a substantial portion of the nation's calls with its advanced electronic switches and signaling system. This system usually completed call routing within seconds, lightning fast, blazingly fast. However, on this day, a fault originated in the New York switch cascading through the network. This was due to a software bug in the recent update that contained a critical bug affecting the network's 114 switches. When the New York switch reset itself and sent out signals, this bug caused a domino effect, leading to widespread network disruption. Okay, what is it? What is it? Interestingly, this small software patch was not tested. Damn, they tested in production. Dude, AT&T tested in production in the 90s. Man, the 90s were crazy, okay? The 90s were wild. Uh, testing was actually bypassed as per management's request because the code change was small. Gotta love management. Management knows best, people. Management has always known best, okay? So next time you're in a meeting and some manager's like, hey, guess what? We don't need to do X, Y, and Z. Like, let's just pretend you're going to have a submarine that you want to take to the bottom of the ocean and you want to bypass a couple safety features. Well, guess what? Management is always right. Don't forget it. The root cause was traced back to the coding error in software update implemented across the network switches. The error within a C program involved a misplaced break statement. Oh, yes. Oh, just the worst feature of them all, which is switch. And now you're telling me it's a break statement to cost $60 million. Oh, my. That is beautiful. Within a nested conditional statements leading to data overwrites and system resets, the pseudocode. While ring receiving buffer not empty and side buffer not empty, initialize pointer to the first message in side buffer, you know, the IT&T with them side buffers, or ring receive buffer, get copy of buffer, switch message if incoming, uh, if sending switch is out of service, if ring write buffer is empty, send service or send in service to status map, else break. This was the error, and if there was no else, there's no else statement here. There's never been an else statement, and they made one on accident, by accident, for accident. Damn. Here's the yeah option. Yep. There you go. Process incoming message. Set of pointers to optional parameters. Break. Yeah. Yeah. You done. You done messed up, Blocky. You can tell right away that this was. This is not it. Dude, no brackets either. I know. In this pseudocode, disgusting. The problem, the ring buffer, uh, let's see, the ring write buffer is not empty, and the if statement on line 7 skipped, let's see, is skipped, and the break statement on line 10 is hit. However, for the program to function properly, line 11 should have been hit and said, yes, this process business right here. That's what they're talking about. When the break statement is hit, instead of the incoming message being processed and the pointer being set up to, uh, to optional parameters, then data, the pointers that should have been held, is overwritten. The error correction software identified the data overwrite and initiated a shutdown of the switches for a reset. Oh, my. Oh, my. This issue was compounded because this flawed software was present in all switches across the network, leading to a chain of reaction to of resets that ultimately crippled the entire network system. 
Oh boy. Every time this was hit, it would just chain reaction shut down. Oh, despite rigorous testing. Wait, what? You know, if this was one of those really highly edited reaction videos, right now it would play me being like, you know, you don't test nothing, says management. And then all of a sudden, despite rigorous testing and network design for resilience, one line of code was able to bring down half the country's main line of communication. The fix, it took nine or it took engineers nine hours to get at and system back or fully back online. They did so most, let's see, they did so mostly by rolling back the switches to a previous working version of code. It actually took software engineers two weeks of rigorous code reading, testing, and replication to actually understand where the bug was. Little lesson here, two hours of software engineering time is totally worth the trade-off of sixty million dollars. Okay, that's what I that's what I'm reading right now. That's what I'm reading. Get blame. I know. Get bisect. I know. So I, that's what I'm. Okay. So right away, that's I. Those are my first thoughts. Is where the hell's get bisect? When was get invented? Created? Create? Discovered? Uh, in two thousand and five. This is nineteen ninety. There's no get. Okay. All right. No get. You can't even get good, okay? You can't, literally, you cannot get good. You have to use Tortoise SVN. When was Tortoise SVN d created? Everybody's favorite. Uh, SVN created. Uh, when was SVN created? Uh, subversion, also called SVN, was created 2000. Okay, so still a decade. We're still a decade off. At this point, there's no walking back commits, okay? We all got, we, we're all weak programmers, using SVNs and and gets and all that okay maybe you forgot how awful those back those days were back in the day conclusion uh, for AT&T unfortunately this was uh, this wasn't even their biggest system crash of the 90s they encountered many more issues later in the decade i mean they also were i mean think about what AT&T was doing i mean they helped you know part of the creation of this giant network you know what i mean so it's like that's real you know what i mean we got to give them a little bit of credit. Imagine doing nothing and then doing something that has never been done before that requires thousands of people to be in order, creating the largest software project potentially ever. Wild. Absolutely wild. Today's companies have an even better process in place, and even then, bugs slip through. Google wrote a great retrospective on 20 years of site reliability, reliability engineering where they... Uh, Oh, I might, I'm, I'm going to look at that thing at some point, where they reflected on YouTube's first, or, uh, first global outage in 2016. The scale of outage for companies is huge, and there's lessons to be learned from each outage. For most, however, outages come down to human error and gaps in process. You, 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 do you understand that, Spicy Wiener? You get that? You got a firm grasp on it, Spicy Wiener? Telephony in the U.S. has always been bad compared to Europe. I'm going to say something that may be factually incorrect, but my American mind can only comprehend it in one way, which is the following thing I'm about to say out of my mouth hole, which is we made it first. So we got the worst version. European mind can't, European mind can't comprehend being first. Okay. This just did hot off the presses. European mind can't comprehend being first. Got them. These nuts lay it down. So good. Um, uh, Oh, man. Rage detected. <laughs> I'd rather have V2. Yeah, think about the brain implant coming. I'm definitely not going for V1, V2, V3, V4. I don't want any of them, okay? Until until someone's like, you will, you will get one. I ain't getting one, okay? Sounds terrifying. The name. America number one. Come on, let's go. Private jet, let's go. Yeah, get it. Hoo, hoo.